Good day, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, I would like to share with all of you an important commentary by Father Michel Rodru regarding his adventures in Medjugorje and how he met Our Lady in there. If you would like to know about how Father Michel Roderick's messages and prophecies are fulfilling evidently in these times, we have provided a link to the video in the description below. Please take a moment in sharing this video with others, as this commentary is a very important message which all of us should know about, and we hope that these messages will be shared and spread across the ends of the earth to the glory of the Most Holy Trinity. Let us now start by reciting this short prayer, asking our Heavenly Father for discernment and guidance, that the Holy Spirit may show us the truth and guide us when listening to these messages from heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the King of Kings and our all-powerful God. There is nothing which you could not do. We implore you to give us an experience of your heart. Draw us deep into your very being, into the core of your love for us and of this world. Give us a glimpse of others the way you see others, loving them, forgiving them, and delighting in the way they give glory to you through their very existence. Help us to discern out of that open place of deep affection, so that we too might be a useful vessel of your love in the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Being a seminary professor well-versed in many fields, psychology, dogmatic theology, pastoral theology, practical theology, and having studied church doctrines and church documents concerning the Virgin Mary and approved Marian apparitions, Father Michel didn't believe in Medjugorje. The Virgin Mary, as far as he knew, had never appeared and given consistent messages for so long and in such a manner. But Father Michel never spoke out against the alleged apparitions in Medjugorje and instead kept his doubts to himself. On the day that Iraq invaded Kuwait in 1990, Our Lady appeared to him and asked him to pray, saying that this invasion could start a third world war, but prayer could avert it. Father Michel promised her that he would pray for this intention, because the Virgin Mary looked different than he was accustomed to seeing her, and he was not familiar with how she appeared to the visionaries in Medjugorje, he asked, Who are you? She answered, I am the Queen of Peace. Then she added, I would like you to go to Medjugorje. He told her, but I don't have the money to go. She smiled and then vanished. The next day, he received a check for $3,000 in the mail from a payment he was owed and didn't expect. Even with the political and ethnic tensions in the region, with Yugoslavia breaking up as a country at that time, with war hanging in the air, Father Michel had complete trust in the Blessed Mother and felt no fear in traveling there. Soon after Father Michel arrived, one of the Franciscan priests asked him, Do you speak French? Yes. Can you hear confessions in French? Because we don't have anyone. Yes, no problem. Father Michel proceeded to hear confession, after confession, after confession, after confession. Eventually, he said to the Lord, I need to go to the toilet. Then someone came and helped him take a short bathroom break. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. He came back and heard confession, after confession, after confession, after confession. Father, I am hungry, he said. Immediately, someone came to the confessional door. I have a sandwich for you, Father. Thank you. Later he needed a drink, so he asked God for one, and someone immediately brought him a bottle. Oh, I received so many graces there, Father Michel shared. One day in Medjugorje, I was walking along the sidewalk and said, Lord, I would like a sign from you. Yes, Mama Mary, give me a sign. I would like to have a stole, a green reversible one with red. And I prefer to have a one with a chalice. Just after giving them all my requests, I passed by restaurant where someone called out, Father, Father. 
I looked over and said, me? Yeah. I'd never seen him before in my life, so I entered. He said in English, Father, I have a gift for you. A gift for me. And he gave me a box with a stole, green on the side, red on the other side, and with the image of a chalice on it, everything. I said to Mama Mary, wow, how could I not believe in Medjugorje? It's impossible. I went on to receive many more signs than that in Medjugorje, I assure you. One morning when Father Michel was standing near the side of the road, a car pulled up alongside him. Come with me, the man said to him in French. We have a lot to do today. We'll have breakfast. Who is this priest? Father Michel wondered, and how does he know I speak French? And why am I suddenly spending the day with him? The man was Father Slavko Barbaric, a Franciscan priest originally sent to Medjugorje in 1983 to investigate the apparitions. He became a fervent believer and later, the spiritual director of many years for the six Medjugorje visionaries. Until his sudden death on Mount Kreisbach in November 2000, when he was praying the Stations of the Cross, he was the mainstay of the Medjugorje pilgrims. A trained psychotherapist, who spoke many languages, he tireless organized the daily liturgies, talks in many languages, Eucharistic adoration hours, rosaries, and authored books on prayer, fasting, adoration, the Stations of the Cross, and confession. In a unique Medjugorje message, just a few days after his death, Our Lady told the visionary Marija that Father Slavko was with her in heaven. Father Michel had never met Father Slavko before, and knew neither why Father Slavko knew who he was nor where he was taking him. Father Slavko drove Father Michel around Medjugorje, explaining to him the significance of the various sites and the history of the apparitions. He then took him into a room near the Church of St. James Church, where file upon file, all documentation pertaining to Medjugorje, including the records of miracles and messages, were kept. Follow me, said Father Slavko. Father Michel followed him to a place near the rectory. They descended a flight of stairs leading to a room underground, a secret room. Another priest was there. Father Michel noticed that on one side of the room, a Bible was displayed, and on the other side, a book. Touch the book, Father Slavko said to Father Michel. So he picked up the book and turned the pages. Its pages were like parchment and felt like nothing he had ever touched on earth. What do you see on the pages? Nothing, said Father Michel. Father Slavko then explained how the ten Medjugorje secrets are written on that book's parchment and how the visionary Marjana was asked by Mary to choose a priest who would reveal each secret to the world. She chose a priest named Father Petr Ubisic. Ten days before the first one happens, Merjana will give the book to Father Petter, who will then be able to see and read the first secret. Each of them will pray and fast for seven days. Three days before the secret takes place, Father Petter will reveal it to the Pope and to the world. Then he will hand the book back to Merjana, who will bring it back to him ten days before the next secret is to occur. In one way or another, God will guarantee that the message reaches the world. The book comes from heaven, said Father Slavko. It had been studied and analyzed by scientists who said that the material does not exist on earth. Father Slavko then said to Father Michel, you have a message for us. Heaven had given Father Michel a message specifically for the parish at Medjugorje, and at that moment, he remembered this message. Yes, I do. Father Slavko knew of this because Mary of Medjugorje had told the visionary, Ivan, that Father Michel would come with a message. Father Michel imparted the message and Father Slavko filed it away. The day before Father Michel had to leave Medjugorje, he joined the many people in St. James Church to pray the rosary in the church before the 5.40 p.m. apparition of Our Lady. At that time, the visionaries gathered in a tiny room called the Apparition Room each day shortly before Our Lady appeared to them. 
only a small number of people were allowed into the room. Father Michel noticed that Father Slavko in the front of the church began pointing his finger at something in the back of the church. Father Michel looked around to see what he was pointing to, and everyone turned their heads to look back at him. Me, he gestured. Father Slavko nodded yes. Father Michel walked forward and was escorted to the room of apparitions where a small group of people and all six visionaries prayed waiting for the Virgin Mary to appear. When Mary did, the visionaries suddenly looked up and began to speak and listen to her, impervious to any pain, earthy lights, or the world around them. In the same moment, Father Michel saw Mary in the form of an outline, which lasted the length of the apparition. When the Bosnian War did break out in 1992, Medjugorje was divinely protected. Serbia launched a few warplanes instructed to bomb St. James Church in Medjugorje, but as the pilots were approaching their target, a large cloud came from nowhere, blocking their vision of the church, and they couldn't see anything. Despite this, they launched their rockets. Miraculously, the bombs didn't detonate, and the church was left undamaged. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen a prayer to atone for daily neglects. This prayer is especially powerful because it was revealed to a poor Claire nun by our Lord Jesus Christ that she had gone directly to heaven upon her death, skipping purgatory completely through this prayer. Therefore, let us all imprint this devotion in our hearts for the love of Christ and God, so that we may always contemplate how dreadful each and every one of our sins compared to the infinite greatness and goodness of God. By this prayer, let us also ask our Lord Jesus to grant us the grace of perseverance and charity, that we may stop becoming indifferent and insensitive, that our Lord Jesus may give us the grace to always do as much good as possible in our lifetime, and give us the grace to never compromise in our work of charity to the glory of the Most Holy Trinity. Eternal Father, I offer thee the sacred heart of Jesus, with all its love, all its sufferings, and all its merits. First, to expiate all the sins I have committed this day and during all my life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Second, to purify the good I have done poorly this day and during all my life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Third, to supply for the good I ought to have done, and that I have neglected glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. O glorious Prince Saint Michael, Chief and Commander of the Heavenly Hosts, Guardian of Souls, Vanquisher of Rebel Spirits, Servant in the House of the Divine King, and our Admirable Conductor, you who shine with excellence and superhuman virtue, deliver us from all evil who turn to you with confidence, and enable us by your gracious protection to serve God more and more faithfully every day. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee. O Virgin of Virgins, my mother, to thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. To you, O blessed Joseph, do we come in our afflictions, and having implored the help of your most holy spouse, we confidently invoke your patronage also. Through that charity which bound you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, 
and through the paternal love with which you embraced the child Jesus, we humbly beg you graciously to regard the inheritance which Jesus Christ has purchased by his blood, and with your power and strength to aid us in our necessities. O most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, defend the chosen children of Jesus Christ. O most loving Father, ward off from us every contagion of error and corrupting influence. O our most mighty protector, be kind to us and from heaven assist us in our struggle with the power of darkness. As once you rescued the child Jesus from deadly peril, so now protect God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield, too, each one of us by your constant protection, so that, supported by your example and your aid, we may be able to live piously, to die in holiness, and to obtain eternal happiness in heaven. Amen. Let us also recite the act of contrition together, that our Lord by his most precious blood and sacrifice on Calvary may cleanse of all of our iniquity and sin, and grant us the grace to feel truly saddened and feel remorseful for all the transgressions and sins that we have committed intentionally and unintentionally, that he may also give us the grace to do all of the necessary penances and never commit these grievous sins anymore. O oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins because of thy just punishments, but most of all because they offend thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to sin no more and to avoid the near occasion of sin. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you for watching and may God pour down an abundance of graces and blessings upon all of us. Till next time, stay blessed and keep praying.